It's 20 past two. The comedian Russell Kane. On the way later, Ashley Banjo from Diversity is here. Uh, you, that was quite a quick journey from contestant to judge on, yes, a, on a talent very show. Very quick. Yeah, very quick. Within three months, I think. <laughs> you know, with one Britain's Got Talent and I was a judge on Got To Dance. And it's also when looking at talent shows now, including Got To Dance and others, there's a lot of street dance acts on there. Yeah, the loads. You know, it's the, it's the most popular form of dance at the moment, I would say, in the mainstream. It's really blowing up. So. And was it very popular before Diversity won Britain's Got Talent or is it really popular because you won Britain's Got Talent? There's always been a huge underground, you know, scene for street dance. Um, but shows like Britain's Got Talent, you know, there's, you know, George Sampson won it the year before us, we won it the year after him. Um, we, but we definitely helped, you know, increase it and bring it into the mainstream and, you know, just let people see it and be inspired by it that maybe wouldn't have had the chance what, before. What is street dance? What are the characteristic moves that make it street dance? Street dance. I almost did a move myself as I, I asked you that question. <laughs> you did. I just did. I like way it. wobbled my arms in the air. Um, <laughs> the, it's hard. I don't particularly like the term street dance because it, it covers such a huge umbrella of styles that um, it's kind of a bit it doesn't really make sense in a way there's, there's so many different styles within street dance what is so what is typically the style uh, that diversity use within street dance well we we kind of lean towards and get inspiration from quite a few but I suppose you could say a um, bit of popping just general hip-hop a little bit of break dance there's there's a few different types you know that we use for our performances and you've been dancing since you were three? Yeah, about yeah, about three or four. How often do you practice? I dance every day, to be honest. Even if it's not practice, even if it's just for fun, I, I dance every day. I'm injured at the moment, unfortunately, so I can't dance. But, um, oh. yeah, I dance all the time. Where, whereabouts is your injury? My injury is my knee. I've ruptured a ligament. So you could do some top half dancing, right? I could do some top half dancing, I suppose. There's a lot of top half dancing in street dance. There is a lot of top half. There's a lot of neck movement. You, you could dance with just your arms, just your head, just your fingers. You can do anything in street dance. You think the, the, the idea is within your routines. They always strike me as very creative. Mm -hmm. I think from one of your Prince Got Talent routines, you actually replicated one of the buzzers on the uh, yeah, yeah, we did yeah. Uh, on the show. Ha whose ideas are they predominantly? Um, predominantly, they're my ideas. I, mean, I choreograph the group, so I'll, I'll come into the guys and I'll say, right. This is what I this is what I want to do, and sometimes I mean the buzzer idea. Take that idea in particular. The guys actually looked at me and said, "Come on, really?" And I said, "Yeah, hundred percent. It'll work. How are we going to do that?" And I explained it. And obviously, it was one of the most memorable memorable moments. People come up to me all the time and say, "Oh, the the buzzers." You know, people enjoyed it, so I'm happy it worked. Did this fall out with you? Do they disagree with you at all? Yeah, they do disagree with me, but they trust me at the same time. So even if they think something won't work, they will do it. Yeah. Uh, let me just bring, bring you some news that's coming in to us. 22 minutes past two, Apple founder and CEO Steve Jobs is taking uh, a medical leave of absence uh, so that he can focus on his health. He says he'll continue as CEO and be involved in major decisions, but has asked Tim Cook to be responsible for all day-to-day -day operations. Jobs says that he loves Apple and hopes to be back as soon as he can. He says he and his family would appreciate respect for their privacy. It's not the first time this has happened, of course, so Steve Jobs is taking a medical leave of absence so he says he can focus on his health uh ashley banjo is here so what you say goes right you have the authority yeah yeah i suppose so and how to, to how long does it take to come up with and to rehearse and perfect a three minute routine i think you know what in in this industry sometimes you know it's not how long does it take it's how long have you got if someone says to me right you know there's a performance to do in two days time can you do it? I see, okay. Then we'll do it. We'll stay up 12 hours a day, you know, 14, 15 hours a day, and we'll do it. If someone says to me, you've got two weeks, then I'll use the two weeks, you know, I'll take time to prepare, because I mix the soundtracks as well, along with one of my friends, Fraser. Um, so, yeah, we, we just, you know, it depends how long we've got. I, I'm a perfectionist. I love to sit there and perfect out every move and every sound effect and every beat, but, you know, sometimes I don't get the time to. If someone wants to do street dances, it, do, presumably it helps if they've done other forms of dancing. It's yeah, from, of course, uh, most yeah. of the most people who have they, have they evolved? Did they start with another form of dance and then they've evolved into street dance? Not you know not all the time. A lot of people just start really raw in their bedroom or in their in their front room or just literally have just trained street dance. But my my mum trained raw ballet and that's how I started because she started her own, her own dance school. My my dad turned his old boxing gym into a dance studio, and it was more of a contemporary kind of jazz studio. And uh, that's so where your mum and dad founded a dance studio. This is in Essex, isn't it? They founded Essex, a yeah, founded the studio together. So your dad was a boxer. He was quite renowned, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. He was quite a renowned boxer. Yeah, he was considered. He was talked about in the same breath as Bruno at one point, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, him and Bruno had a little little thing going on, yeah. 
He's right. He's a, he's a contemporary and rival of Frank Bruner. Do you think? And then he became. He set up a dance studio. Did he become a dancer himself, having done boxing? No, no, not not at all. It was my mum who was the dancer, and you know, um, near the end of my dad's boxing career, he was like, "Well, what do we do with the gym?" And they, yeah, they turned it into a, a dance studio for my mum, and she started to, started classes, and it all kind of grew from there. Because I was thinking, there's probably a relationship between the two anyway, isn't there? Gotta be quick, you gotta be light on your feet. Exactly. It's about coordination. Exactly. Core strength. Core strength. Core strength, exactly. It's all about core strength. I hear that phrase a lot down my gym. I have a, occasionally have a personal trainer. I still don't quite know what core strength means. Is core is your core your six pack? No, core is not your six pack. The six pack is like the the show the show part of the core. The <laughs> okay. core are all those muscles in the trunk, you know, all those muscles. What are they? I don't know. Basically you can almost think about it like everything from neck down. So all your back to muscles. waist up, your back muscles are involved in your core, everything underneath the six pack, all your muscle, all your movements really are generated from there. So, you know, when people first started to get into core training, they realise its benefits and, you know, that a lot of the generate, like with boxing, for example, every punch you make, every move you make, every time you twist that body, it all comes from that trunk, from that core. So it's very important. It's strong. Just like dancing, you know, every move you make, if you want to be solid, Got to have so you want core. to be good, you work on your core first work, and foremost. Get that right, core. it all comes from there. Get loose, work on that right. core, exactly. Okay, Because the, uh, the whole six-pack thing, that's yeah. quite hard to get right, isn't it? What I didn't realise, because yeah. a lot of people do a lot of sit-ups mm -hmm. and don't get a six-pack, and I found out why. You don't automatically get a six-pack if you do sit-ups, because what you do is you strengthen the muscles in there, but if you've got a bit of fat... Mm -hmm then it doesn't matter how good they are, the fat will hide the six-pack, exactly. right? Exactly. The six-pack is like the showboat of the core, if you like. So you have to, if you want to show the six pack off, you've got to strip all that fat, get ripped. Don't just do sit ups and expect a six pack. Don't just do sit ups, exactly. You've got to eat right as well. No. <laughs> uh, la on, on your show last year uh, on Got to Dance, the winner was uh, a young chap called uh, Akai. Yeah, Akai. And he won £100,000. What, what's happened to him in the year since he won? Well, you know, he's been doing a lot, obviously, with £100,000. It's kind of, how do I put it, giving him a lot of safety. It's not a normal amount of money for a 10 year old to have in the bank. Um, <laughs> And, you know, he's just been doing loads of loads of performances and loads of work. He's, he's appeared in music videos. He's done Into the Hoods, which was a live show, live dance show. Um, he, you know, he's done loads of work. He's working as a professional dancer at his age, which is amazing. So winning that show had a big impact on what he's doing? Massive he, impact on him, yeah. He got into the hoods because he'd won Got to Dance. Exactly. Because okay. it's, it's, it's a question worth asking that, isn't it? That there's a lot of talent shows around, mm -hmm. and the people that win some of them don't really go on to do very much. Mm -hmm. And it's damaging, isn't it, in the end for these shows, if year after year they produce people who don't appear to receive much of a, a boost as a result of being on the programme. Of course, I suppose so. I mean, you can't help but gain profile. I mean, the amount of people that now know Akai's name and the amount of work he does from doing the show, yeah. it's, it's only a, it can only be a positive effect for him. It's also a show, it's, it's in America now, isn't it? They've sold this format to the States. It is, indeed. Live to Dance in, in the States. With Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul, yep. Who's migrated? Didn't she? She she was on America's not America's Got Talent, American, American Idol. American Idol. I don't know what happened. She fell out with him or something, didn't she? Something like that. I don't know. But she's now um, judge on Live to Dance in America. So that's and that's recently started over there, yeah, hasn't it? With Kimberly. With Kimberly. Yep. Yeah. Are you are you frustrated that you're not a judge on that one? Does that frustrated. create tension amongst the judges? No, not at all. Not, I mean, I, She's on American telly. Yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, I, of course I'd love to be on American telly, but at the same time, I've got... It's not just my career, it's diversity. We are focusing and we've got a lot coming up and a lot to do. So, um, yeah, if, everything happens for a reason. A little bit of resentment. That no, not, not at all. I love Kim. So, no resentment at all. Nugget, You're trying to get it out of me. No resentment. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what time... I know you've released a DVD, you've released an exercise DVD, but what... Yes. Uh, what shows have you got coming up? What are your ambitions for diversity? Where do you take it from here? Where do you take it? Well, to be honest, we can't. We are about our live shows, and we've done we've done you know two tours, two thousand and ten. Um, yeah, we, I mean we've done about fifty fifty eight dates around the UK, um, about one hundred and seventy thousand tickets. So it was amazing, and, and people you know really responded well to the live show. So we want to take out a new tour. We want to hopefully take our stuff to the big screen. Um, How long is your show in total? Two hours. That's a lot of routine. It's a lot of routine, but it's not... I mean, it's you can like, potentially spend months on a three-minute routine. Exactly. And you do a two-hour show. It's almost like one big routine. It's one big story. It's not loads of separate is routines. Is Red Buzzer in there? Narrative. Red Buzzer is in there. Yes, it <laughs> no. is. Where, where do you get your ideas from? I get inspiration from everywhere, really. Um, I, I watch a lot of films. I think I take a lot of inspiration from TV and film, you know. Yeah. yeah. 
And I want to ask you when you so your if your mum and dad still got this dance school, that's still going still in Essex. Have it, yep. And uh, what, uh, what happened? What kind of impact did diversity winning Britain's Got Talent have on that school in terms of the number of people applying to learn to dance there? Yeah, obviously it has. It had a big impact. You know, a lot of people wanted to come to the school. It almost gives it like a um, another level of credibility. You know, people yeah. obviously know what you're talking about before, but the fact that millions of other people have now verified it by voting for you, it kind of seems more credible. So um, obviously, yeah, people love to come and dance there. Okay, now listen, thank you for coming in. It's good to see you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm slightly embarrassed by almost attempting a little bit of street dance as I spoke to you and I waved my arms. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Mid, mid, you enjoyed it, I thank enjoyed you. I enjoyed it a lot. Did it qualify as street dance? It did qualify as street dance. Is that because anything can qualify no, but street but you, you do. You, what you did, <laughs> did qualify. So. What is the most rudimentary, someone wants to know, what's like the basic most rudimentary move in street dance? Like a standard thing that you've got to be thing. able to do. You, can, you, can, you just need to be able to groove. You just need to be able to. What does that rhythm. mean? That's just, what that means. So, like, if I was to, if I was to give you a beat, yeah, yeah you're grooving. Right, I'm not in my head now. That's it. Here you go. You're grooving. That's, that, that is the most basic thing. That was it. Dance. That is it. Just that, that. Just that. Easy. But that really is no different to listening to headphones on the train and it's, nodding exactly. up and down. Exactly. A lot of people it, have got natural ability to dance, even if they don't believe it. Okay. Well, I'm delighted to know that officially I can groove. You can groove. <laughs> right. Actually, thank you very much. And Got to Dance, it's on Sky One at the moment. First two episodes have gone out. It's back this Sunday. Then yep. it finishes with big live shows at the end and someone gets £250,000. Quarter of a million pounds. It's going to be huge. Hey, good stuff. Ashley Banjo, thank you very much. Thank you. So many of you texting us about Katie Price.